Singapore's athletes are busy with their final preparations for the fast-approaching SEA Games. But aside from their own training, they are also getting an unprecedented level of support in other aspects from the Singapore Sports Institute. In this week's Spotlight, Nadia Janssen Hassan takes a look at how some of the Institute's facilities can help athletes in their push for glory. Danny Yeo has been swimming for Singapore for nine years now. Apart from having a rigorous training schedule, the 25-year-old has worked with biomechanists from the Singapore Sports Institute, or the SSI, to fine-tune his technique. Biomechanists are experts in how the body moves. They look at everything from how a swimmer jumps off the starting block, to his stroke rates and length, to his turns. Danny says such detailed analysis has helped him swim faster. For example, my, my starts, I, I tend to enter at a weird angle with my legs a bit bent. So I worked with Ryan and he actually caught that on video and uh, we worked a bit with the coaches to change that. So I think that has helped my dive a lot. So I get a lot more speed at the start. Movement analysis is one of the key services the SSI has been providing to national athletes since it was set up in 2011. Most people think about the amount of funding or the amount of resource that you give in order to make an athlete uh, successful. And at the Singapore Sports Institute, we're looking at how do we apply not only those types of resources, but how do we then apply the sciences uh, to really building a battlefield-ready athlete. In table tennis, for example, biomechanists can assess a player's response, their proximity to the table, the angle of the paddle, how fast they strike, and even the movement of the ball itself. These are factors that affect performance. And when the International Table Tennis Federation decided last year that plastic balls will replace the traditional celluloid balls at its tournaments, SSI biomechanists sprung into action. So the SSI biomechanics department has set up this facility to see how athletes cope with the change in ball. So as you can see, they've placed some markers on this paddle and also my hand, which the infrared cameras over there will then pick up. And later on, they can then analyze this movement using 3D animation technology. What they found is the new ball travels slightly slower with less spin, which affects where the players should stand. So assuming that the old ball travels further down the table and the new ball actually lands on uh, my side of the table uh, closer to the net, that would mean that the athlete should actually position themselves closer to the table if they wanted to respond better to the new ball. Uh, so these are things that we can assess in three dimensions over here. Movement analysis isn't limited to hands, feet and body positioning. They've got this eye tracker which, as the name suggests, lets them look through the athlete's eyes. They're using it for sports like bowling which require high levels of focus. What we found for the bowlers who are performing uh, pretty well at the moment uh, is that not only are their gaze uh, behaviours extremely consistent, um, it's very stable. What I mean by stable is, you know, your eyes don't look uh, all over the place, but it's fixed on very specific locations. And after bowling, they actually keep their eyes on that point till the ball actually passes that point. Take a look how this bowler stays consistently focused, which leads to a strike. Compare that to the unsteady gaze of this bowler, who doesn't quite hit all the pins. So for this task, uh, it's an eccentric hand swing task. Studying an athlete's performance can also help prevent injuries. Take sprinters who are prone to hamstring injuries. Okay, pull, 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 pull! Back, pull, pull! Back. This equipment can help assess why this happens. It allows for the hamstring to be lengthened to the same state it would be in if the athlete was sprinting, so sports scientists can test how much force it can really absorb. By assessing that and then assessing the main 
power generators for the sprint, which are your hip flexor muscles and forming strength ratios. Uh, that allows us to better understand whether there are any balances or imbalances. And if there are any imbalances, then we can work with our strength and conditioning coaches uh, to tailor a strength conditioning program to help our athletes achieve that kind of symmetry. In the past, when I first used this machine, it was due to a hamstring problem. I mean, it was a repeated problem. So after using this machine, I kind of know what is wrong with my body. And so with um, a tweak in the program, after a prolonged period, I've been fine up all this well, yeah. Although it is at the forefront of sports science, the SSI is constantly looking for new technologies to help athletes. As you can see, this facility is currently under renovation, but come April this year, it's going to be a fully furnished altitude house, complete with four bedrooms and two bathrooms. This place can simulate being thousands of meters above sea level, where oxygen levels are much lower. At sea level, oxygen levels are 20.9%. Imagine putting an athlete at 3,000 meters above sea level where oxygen levels are 15%. When there's less oxygen, his body will produce more red blood cells. This will enhance his breathing capacity when he's back at sea level. The idea is to get athletes to stay in these chambers for 10 to 12 hours every day for 3 to 4 weeks. Doing this could increase the body's red blood cell volume by 1 to 3%. The SSI says this could last for about two weeks. But aside from getting athletes ready physically, the SSI also helps them mentally. National tennis player Sarah Pang estimates that tennis players spend only 5% of a match hitting the ball. This makes mental preparation crucial for the time they're not in action. Having the, the resilience and the focus on court to know what you're doing, when you have to do it, and what you have to do is so important, but you can only have that when you have a certain sense of mental clarity to what you intend to do. Um, my, my work with sports psychology, sports psychology has really helped me uh, focus and, and has brought a deeper belief to what I bring to court. Some of the things that we do include teaching them mental skills, so things like goal setting, uh, imagery, self-talk, um, and also uh, we help facilitate some thought processes that uh, can be helpful for them in their performances. Some of our sessions includes giving them the opportunity um, to, you know, to just talk about other things in their lives that might be affecting them. With all this help, it seems Team Singapore athletes are on the right track to go for gold this coming June.